Hey everybody, welcome to Sideshow Live. Woo! Yeah, I, I, oh, that felt so good. I am Jeff May and I'm so excited to be here with you and uh, I'm very lucky to have Joshy G here. He is here helping with us today. The Dream host Team is back together. Oh, all your cards and emails. They, they worked. Everything, We're back together. Everything came through. Yeah, yep. the mega powers have reunited. They have right. reunited. Uh, now, we have a super fun show today. Uh, first up, we're going to have geek headlines, and you know who that's going to be with, so I'm excited about that. Freak. Then we have a few very special guests. We have author Samuel C. Spitali and project manager Andrew McBride with us, and they're going to chat about Star Wars collecting a galaxy from Sideshow. Now, we'll be also taking live questions from Samuel and Andrew, excuse me, for Samuel and Andrew, but if they have questions, they can ask them too uh, as well so you're going to be able to ask those questions for them now before we get started uh, be sure to enter the art print giveaway for a chance to win the avengers earth's mightiest heroes fine art print by ian mcdonald after jim lee uh, i know you all love that piece i know i do so i'm really excited about that all you got to do is head to side.show slash mightiest heroes to enter for your chance to win. Now you only have until Friday, February 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so don't delay. Uh, speaking of not delaying, let's get started. Josh, I'm gonna need you to start us off with some of our favorite geek headlines from the past week. Joshy G, take it away. Geek headlines, mm. geek headlines. Mm -hmm. No, not, not, not as good as my other one. No, but it's right. still good. But whatever. Uh, it's a work in progress. All right, guys, we're going to start things off with some Birds of Prey news. That's right. Rotten Tomatoes has revealed its initial score for the Margot Robbie film. Based on 52 reviews so far, Margot Robbie's Birds of Prey currently has a score of 90, or it's in the 90s. In the uh, so that's really, really cool. The movie comes out on Friday. Uh, I liked Suicide Squad. Margot Robbie's portrayal as Harley Quinn was kind of the shining beacon of that movie. Jeff, are you going to see Birds of Prey? Do you, uh, what do you think of the score being in the 90%? I am absolutely here for this. I do like that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna enter to win that print on Friday. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna go see Birds of Prey. Yeah? No, no, I really am so stoked on this. Uh, it looks so much fun. I think DC is really finding uh, their sort of niche and being like, oh, we should make these fun. Uh, I love Shazam. Uh, I really enjoyed Aquaman. This looks like it's going to be fun. It's going to have a good time. It's got that kind of fun R-rated uh, version that we got with things like Deadpool. You got the black mask in there. You got the hyenas. Oh. You got all the birds of prey. I'm, I mean, I'm it, really excited. Yeah, it looks like a really, really good film. And like you said, you know, the cast is amazing. Uh, and, you know, already coming out into the 90s, that... that, that Speaks volumes for the, the DC universe, so to speak. Yeah, man, I'm into that. Give me Mary Elizabeth Winstead as the Huntress any day. That's All right. Yeah, well, you got it. That. You oh, got it on you. Friday. Thank you, John. All right, moving on. We got some Marvel Super Bowl news. All right, the, the trailer was released this Sunday. The Disney Plus debuted a trailer for the upcoming Marvel shows during the Super Bowl this past Sunday. And the 30-second clip gives us a sneak peek at WandaVision, Loki, and the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, obviously, that was a really, really cool trailer to see during the Super Bowl. I know I fanboyed out. I screamed at the television. And just seeing, you know, the Falcon throwing the, the shield, seeing the different types of costumes that uh, Wanda and for, oh, yeah. for WandaVision, that was really, really cool. And even seeing Loki, even just for a split second, uh, got me excited for the three upcoming shows that Disney Plus is offering us and uh, and Marvel. Uh, what was your favorite part of the trailer? Uh, I would say that the, uh, the WandaVision stuff was the stuff that really pulled me in. I got sort of shades of the Tom King Vision series um, from a few years back. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also we got that sort of Halloween costumey version of the comics Scarlet Witch. Little nod, little like, And hey. I was like, put this out there for me. I need it. I need to have this. I need to consume it. They all also look very different, which Are I you, think is really cool. The shows look like they all have vastly different tones. Is there a specific show you're excited for? Is it like one I mean, more so than the other? WandaVision, I think, is the one that I'm really looking forward to the most. And then um, uh, Winter Soldier and, and the Falcon, I think, those that those two are the ones that really are pulling me in. Okay. I like Loki, but those two are just grabbing me and I'm very, choking I'm very me excited to see them. what they're going to do with U.S. Agent. You see him briefly yeah. running onto the football field, high-fiving people. And that's, uh, it's what Russell, right? Ru it, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Kurt Russell and, and uh, Goldie Hans. Son. 
powerful son. Russell yeah. Wyatt? Why Russell? Wyatt, Wyatt Russell. Russell. Yeah. There it is. We there got it is. There. We got it. We got it. All right. Into some horror news. The Spiral trailer was released today. A new chapter in the Saw horror franchise. Samuel L. Jackson and Chris Rock star in the reboot. And I am a big fan of the Saw franchise. Uh, this looks really, really interesting. Uh, it's they are they're they're touting it as from the book of Saw, so it's almost kind of like an expansion of the Saw universe, if you will. Uh, Jeff, are you a fan of the Saw franchise? Uh, I am a I'm aware of it. <laughs> I, I'm not like the I I get a little squeamish. I have a weak stomach and I'm a coward. You know, you know when you're when you're completely no, I don't know afraid of stuff. <laughs> So I get I get a little bit like squeamish at that. I am uh, I'm into the idea. This has a very kind of like seven vibe too. Yeah. Which I really like. I love seven. Uh, so I haven't really dove dove too deep into Saw, but I'm gonna check out Spiral. But because... you got the super team of Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson yeah, in man. Spiral. I mean that alone yeah. will, will drive people into the theaters. But then you add that horror twist that I think people are going to look forward to, especially in the Saw franchise. I'll check this one out. You better. Well, I, I mean, I can't not now. <laughs> Otherwise, no, never mind. We won't go there. Uh, finally, some Snake Eyes news, some GI Joe news. Henry Golding really. Um, excuse me, revealed on his Instagram page today uh, a first look at Snake Eyes. He will be playing the Ninja Commando on the big screen in kind of a Snake Eyes origin story. Uh, I am a huge G.I. Joe fan. I think we were talking earlier, Retaliation. I know, very unpopular opinion, but I liked it, all right? I love Cobra Commander. I love the entire G.I. Joe kind of mythos. Uh, are you excited to see them taking Snake Eyes into a whole new world. Yes, I am. I also like that it, this doesn't. Uh, the the one of the problems with the I think the GI Joe uh, the the last two movies was that they were like we got to sell toys, you know. Uh, and this does seem like it has more of a we can build a universe from this and then go from there. Uh, I'm a huge Retaliation fan. I, I love, loved it. Great. I loved the homage to GI Joe Twenty One on the cliffs, and I love all the characterizations. I think it's the best. Uh, sort of one of those retro vintage movies, you know, the stuff that we enjoyed as a kid. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, it's the best version, the best adaptation of those. And I think you can only sort of build from that with this next film. So I'm excited. I like. I'm. I'm. I'm stoked to see this. Is there a particular character besides Storm Shadow uh, you want to see in this film? I mean, I w I would like to see if they're going to do the um, Scarlet and Snake Eyes sort of romance thread. Romance guy, you, you softy. I mean, Scarlet, you know. I want a notebook, but uh, with snake eyes. She's from Boston. What do you want from me? Well, I'm a fan. those are your geek headlines. Let us know in the chat which one you're the most excited about. Or if we missed one, let us know so we can get them on a future episode. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. It's on to you, bud. All right. We are going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to be checking out... The Art of the Star Wars book. I'm going to have my guys here. We're going to be taking a look at that. So stay tuned. We will be right back. Lickety split. Woo!
Hun, thank you so much for joining us. Now today we are going to be looking at Star Wars Collecting a Galaxy from Sideshow Collectibles in partnership with Insight Editions, as you might uh, see here. Uh, now this is really funny, uh, really cool. Star Wars Collecting a Galaxy is an illustrated history of Sideshow's relationship with and love of Star Wars. Now we're very lucky to have a couple of the guys who helped make this happen, uh, Samuel Spitali and Andrew McBride. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, for being here, guys, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. No, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I have. Oh boy, I have. I have some books here. I have. Uh, I have uh, three versions of the book right here, which I'm really excited to. I'm taking all three home. Yeah. That doesn't even seem necessary. <laughs> I just have to do it. Um, so I have these. But the first question that I want to have, and this is for both of you right now, is well, I, I would love to know what each of you did um, as sort of the process of this book. Like, in, in what uh, in what ways are you involved in this book? Do I start? Um, so yeah, start uh, now. <clears throat> I wrote the text uh, for the book, and Andrew pretty much did everything else. So <laughs> yeah, I have, it's that easy. Um, but no, I have a, a great team that I work with, and um, we were responsible for putting the entire book together, how we wanted to show the information and kind of what the story was to tell. And then worked with Chris to, uh, or Sam, as everyone should know him, but I know him as Chris. Um, uh, that's intriguing. We, yes, yes, that's, that's part two. Um, but we interviewed um, all the employees that have worked on the book, all the artists and everyone that was involved in making all the Sideshow products and the Star Wars products that we've made so far. And uh, we were able to then put that into a book. That's pretty awesome. Now, Sam, uh, writing is sort of like a second career for you. Uh, now, I need you to tell me, I need you to tell me, you have a long history of working on Star Wars uh, and with Sideshow, is that correct? Uh, correct. I uh, worked at Lucasfilm for almost 15 years, oh. and I managed the Sideshow license the first 10 years of their contract. So. Wow. I was part of the product development group uh, when Sideshow first became a partner with Lucasfilm. I mean, that's. Yeah. I mean, this is a match made in heaven then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, completely. Um, I'm very excited that uh, Greg Anzalone uh, asked me to write the book when uh, a few years ago at Comic Con uh, he was talking about wanting to do a really nice uh, photography book of all the Star Wars Sideshow product. And, is, and is, thought I'd be perfect. Is to that flat? Were you flattered on that? Was that oh, like completely? A, yeah. Um, yeah, I was surprised totally stoked because. Uh, yeah, I had no idea they were thinking of uh, doing anything like this, but it's a beautiful collection of everything we worked on together and produced over the years. So. I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, having the relationship with Lucasfilm and with Sideshow and building that connections that you've been involved in a lot of large projects, but is have you ever worked on anything of this scale before? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's my first, you know, uh, book, but the scale of the licensing program at Lucasfilm was Seems pretty, pretty enormous because I'd say about 90, maybe 95% of the products in this book I actually did the approvals on and oh. the de development for on the Lucas side. Thank you. So um, We appreciate so that. It, yeah, you know, I mean, it was a lot. It was, uh, in looking back, it was kind of hard to believe it was this many items. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot more to count. suggest to you after this. I'm yeah. going to try it out. I've got a few of my own, too. Yeah. I'm still waiting for it. Okay, yeah. but also me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, I have uh, three books here. These are, uh, you guys mentioned, this is different versions of this book. Uh, I need to know what is the difference between these yeah. three books. Essentially, the books are all the same with the exception of the uh, book in the center, which was the Geek Fuel edition, um, and it's just physically smaller. Uh, the covers are the exclusives. So we have the Obi-Wan Kenobi Mythos cover, which is the Sideshow exclusive so cover. That's, that's this one right here. Which you can only get through the website. And then we have the trade version as well. Ugh. Sorry to go faster. No, 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 it's good. I like when you talk really fast. Oh, oh, okay, now my camera guy. Look, man, here's the thing. <laughs> it's I'm, my first time, so I have an excuse. It's okay, yeah, no, no, I'm blowing it. This is... <laughs> That's all right. I'm getting on uh, your fired text right now, probably. Uh, it's fine. Don't. No, it's not fine. I need this. Uh, so this one you said is. So that's the side sh or the trade exclusive or the trade version, which is the mass 
retail version. So if you go to Amazon or Barnes and Nobles, that will be the version you get. Oh, cool. So so you have your your bookstore version right here. Exactly. You have your sideshow exclusive version. And then you have, what? how do we get this one? So this was for the Geek Fuel edition, which was a subscription box for December that was done. And I think you can still order it. I'm hoping. Real? Oh, so this was in a subscription yeah, box. Yeah, so it's a subscription box, oh, and cool. you got a bunch of other things, but you got a smaller version and an exclusive cover as well, which was really cool to be able to provide the different versions of the covers and show the different art. And That's super rad. Like, what a, what a cool... What a, like, if I had that subscription box, I'd be stoked yeah, to it have gotten that. really neat, because you didn't know what you were getting in the subscription box. It was just a Star Wars item, so really cool that it was that book. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. I think that's a pretty strong deal. Um, now, how did you both end up on the project specifically? I know we touched a little bit on that. Um, so you would already, uh, Samuel, mentioned. Uh, yeah, I uh, Greg, uh, CEO of Sideshow, asked me uh, to write the copy because I was familiar with the whole product line, so I thought I'd kind of be the perfect person uh, to work on this. Uh, and so that's how I came, I became involved. Yeah. And then for myself, my department handles the publishing aspect of, uh, of what Sideshow does. We're in the graphic design department. So this naturally falls into our, our territory. So then it's just a matter of figuring out what story that we're trying to tell and the information that we want to present and then interviewing everybody and just kind of taking all this information that we've had almost over 15 years and trying to make it into a concise story and presentation. So. Did you have to fight for this project or did you guys, or, or was it assigned to you or was it something that you um, were like, this is what I want to do, I want, I want this thing? Yeah, it was definitely a project that we, my department wanted to work on. I know I did especially, you know, to be able to bring all the products of Star Wars that we've made and be able to present it in a, in a book format. For me, it was really exciting. I have a background in print and a major in bookmaking, so it's oh. kind of the natural yeah, culmination of all those things fools together. fools to not have you Yeah, do. and then also just simply the fact of, um, I've worked at Sideshow now almost 10 years, and to be able to show all those pieces that I've been around and been a part of developing and then to showcase that in a book is really special and it's a it's a neat way to get the book out to the fans who maybe you can't get every piece but to be able to see everything that we've done is is really exciting in one space space so. that that is really rad now you are both star wars fans correct correct are there any like little easter eggs or things that you guys kind of have in the book that are your favorite little nods or, or things that might not be overt but they're just things that you really like for the fans i know for myself i, I really like the artist series section which in, you know shows our mythos and the macquarie pieces that we've done and it was a really great place where we could showcase all the great concept art that we use to make the figures. And it was just a really neat area to show kind of the other side of Star Wars that some of the fans maybe aren't aware of, weren't sure, you know, the, all the concept, concept art that McQuarrie had done. So for me, that was neat to be able to show a different side of Star Wars than, yeah. you know, your average fan might be aware of. I, uh, I do like that you brought up the artist series. Uh, Samuel, what, what about you? Is there any pieces that really kind of... Um, I don't know about uh, Easter eggs per se, but uh, let's see, I'll... Um, but one of the things uh, I really do like, uh, like I knew the book would be uh, sort of a catalog, but also show um, through the photography just the artistry of all the pieces. Um, but I really like how, um, I'm looking for a good example, uh, <laughs> but how we see not only the final product and the sculptural details but also the concepts and the turnarounds. Actually, the Grievous is a really good one. Um, seeing all of the, you know, something like okay, this. So your blueprints. Um, yeah, so we're not just seeing uh, the gorgeous photography. I'm going to angle this one out. How about I take that? Uh, and yeah. then... But we're seeing, you know, just all of uh, how detailed and how much work went into, um, yeah, the design itself, the engineering. Yeah, and... we got to show the engineering. Grievous at the time was one of our most, and still is one of our most complicated six scale figures that we had done. And to be able to show the engineering that went into it and the amount of pieces that were involved for the articulation that we achieved was, was really exciting. And mm -hmm. it's things like that that we haven't historically shown our fans. So it's really neat to be able to go through the archives and show mm -hmm. all these little intricacies that we were able to put into these figures that you may or may not quite realize. So for us, it's 
we're able to explore that and sh share that, and it's it's just for the love of what we do. Kind yeah. of a, an inside look at the development process yeah. in a way which most people don't get to see. Um, and then the Grievous is, you know, that's a really impressive figure. Um, I mean, it's probably as poseable as the 3D uh, special effect Grievous. Yeah. Like, it, <laughs> it matches it so closely that... It can do almost everything the on-screen Grievous can do. It's I mean, a real achievement. Which is amazing because it defies yeah. physics since it was only CG <laughs> on screen. And, you know, how do you figure out what was on screen in reality and in, in the physical space? So it's neat to... It's a miracle work. It was work. probably, um, you know, a, a benchmark because up until uh, around that year of figures, most of the 12-inch figures we had done... Uh, uh, was on their platform body, mm -hmm. which is how most of the 12-inch lines, um, uh, you know, are planned. Uh, yeah. So you have the basic human anatomy, and then you uh, put the soft goods and the fabric mm -hmm. and the but skull. But on this on one, head. you have to redo But the on thing. the Grievous, I mean, it was entirely um, yeah. a new sculpt, and it was a process. I feel like we worked on that figure for several years yeah. because uh, we kind of kept redoing um, some of the Grievous like, you know, you have the 3D turnaround Grievous, but then you've got all this reference material, and some of the reference mm -hmm. material contradicts itself. So I, yeah. I love that this has become a Grievous love letter right <laughs> here. I am going to push forward a little bit now because sure. you mentioned Macquarie and the Mythos line. Are there pieces in those lines? Like, what iteration is your favorite of in those specific artist lines? Because Ralph McQuarrie being mm -hmm. the original concept artist uh, of the Star Wars universe. Yeah, I, um, I, I love seeing the evolution of the Stormtrooper and kind of where different design elements were used for different characters as the process went on. Right, there's shields and lightsabers. Yeah, yeah and, and, and just kind of the, the helmet look you can kind of see where they, you know, use that in different, you know, yeah. has like versions. a biker scout kind of uh, yeah. vibe and to it. Yeah, and a little bit of the old uh, Boba Fett Boba as well, Fett which look, is yeah. kind of so it's neat to see how that evolved and developed. And then also just simply the the set designs that he would draw were amazing, yeah. and you know, telling that story in a in a two D print and just getting excited about Star Wars in that way was really neat. And seeing where it came from, yeah. where I never saw that art as a kid, so as I've gotten older and become more aware of it, it's neat to see, like, oh, look at where this came and look at where it went. And yeah. It's just exciting to see. Samuel, is there, like, a Mythos piece by any chance that you really kind of uh, um, uh, vibe with? Mythos, uh, specifically, I, I really dig the Vader, especially the paint application on... Uh, the, most, the Vader on the, Mustafar. The Mustafar, yeah. uh, the lava, the way, you know, the, mm -hmm. they really captured kind of the lighting of what that uh, scene would be like. And yeah. um, so I remember being really impressed when that came through. I'm in love people. with that. We have one on yeah. display at Sideshow, and I always stop and stare at it. I love it. Do you have um, an individual favorite piece? Uh, um, it's so tough because all these pieces are so amazing. One piece that I like just, and it's kind of a funny anecdote, is the life-size Han and Carbonite. Um, when we were working on that piece, the casting of the hand, we needed to improve a little bit. So this pinky was used as the Han and Carbonite pinky. So that has a special place for myself just because oh. that's pretty cool. That wasn't your favorite Easter egg when I asked that question? Well, that's, <laughs> no one would know. So that's I'm sharing it here now for the first time so everyone Fair would enough. be aware of it. But... Um, yeah, there's there's just so many great pieces. So, the Scout Trooper has always been a personal favorite. So I mean, the Scout Trooper is such a great piece that they were like, look, we're gonna put a bike out too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you can't go that. wrong. So no, that as a fantastic. kid, that was always my favorite, and I still love it today. So. I like making the sound. The yes. Woof. Yeah. That sound I was obsessed with when I was a kid. Samuel, what about you? Do you have a piece that's like your favorite? Um, I got. It's hard to choose a favorite from all of the different scales and lines. Well, um, do it. <laughs> Uh, for as far as life size pieces go, I really love the Salacious Crumb mm. because it was sculpted and painted by the guy that actually did the Salacious Crumb on Return of the Jedi. Oh, um, and oh okay. So, which was very cool. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just so many pieces I love. We were talking earlier about the Fall of the Empire statue diorama, mm. which is a stormtrooper kind of falling and three Ewoks taking them down. I yeah, love that's the become, whimsy of that piece. Uh, they are ferocious looking. I believe yeah. even Chief Chirp is really going to town yeah, uh, so they're, they're on that poor stormtrooper. So that one's a lot of fun. That's uh, one of yeah. the most brutal sideshow statues I've ever seen. It's just these mm -hmm. three Ewoks really going. That's like one of those pieces that like 
people want to go back in time and get. Yeah, that's I think from it's like one of those. 2010. Yeah, it definitely has become a, a sought after piece on the secondary market. Where I think at the time, it maybe it was people weren't ready for it. Yeah, maybe. And now everybody's like, I am ready yes. for this. Um, now, I think we kind of have established that your favorite parts of the book is really showing the design process and everything like that. Now, uh, if we're trying to tell people like why they want this book, like what would you? I think as just as a Star Wars fan, you will enjoy this book to see the the sheer volume of characters that we've been able to showcase in the 3D form will be really neat and. You know, you might only get a, a quick shot of some of these characters on screen, but here you can see them fleshed out in real life. And I think that's really neat and exciting. And then if you're even more of a fan of, a fan of Sideshow and you collect these pieces, it's really great to see the development that went into it. Some of the, the artistry and the designs and the early stages and the behind the scenes that maybe you just haven't seen up to this point. So it's really neat to... Uh, different levels of collectors, I think, can have a different appreciation for what they're seeing. And it's, I think it just adds to a great overall collection of Star Wars. So if you're a Star Wars fan, I think it really would be at home in your collection for not only the film aspect, but from the sideshow collectible standpoint. And it's, Can't argue with that. Yeah. Samuel, you agree? Uh, yeah, completely. It's a hard disagree. Um, no. Yeah, I feel like there's actually, a, uh, look at the book one more time, there's a quote by Greg in the end mm -hmm. that I feel like pretty much sums up uh, the beauty of the book. Um, uh, we know, Greg Anzalone uh, from Sideshow, we know it's not reasonable to own every item we make, but we hope this visual treat gives fans some of the joy we've had in creating them. Oh, so, I love that. Yeah. So Thank it's you, Greg. Shout great, out to Greg yeah. for yeah. that. Uh, uh, that is a great that is a great sort of sign off on that piece. Now, uh, we have got a few questions uh, from the audience, which I'm really excited to ask you. Um, so one of the questions is, um, how much of the photos are composited versus staged? Um, that's a great question. And I'd have to look through every image to tell you that. Um, no, I need a number now. Uh, let's say 64%. Oh, okay, that's, um, that's pretty good. But it's, it's hard to say. I mean, we always, I think, strive to do as much in photo yeah. manipulation as we can to showcase lighting and any special yeah. effects that we can. But of course, we'll always rely on the digital techniques that we have at our disposal to use, so. Yeah, it's a pretty cool mix. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't want to give away all our secrets, of course, but the images on the cover have all had a little slight tweaking. But at the same time, I mean, the Obi-Wan is almost all in camera. There's very little additional adjustments that are made, maybe a little bit of lighting and things like that and evening out some shadows. But for the most part, that's pretty much all in camera. Yeah, that's, so that's we have an amazing photography team and we can showcase their work in these books and it's fantastic. We really do. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of the work that they do and it's mm -hmm. really um, so great. Um, did this, um, I know we have that new, the Rancor piece that mm -hmm. has come out. Did it make it in time for the book or? That's the problem is, you know, when you're putting out a book of this magnitude, it's where do you draw that line of what you're going to show, what's what's made it past development or the various stages. So the, the Rancor, unfortunately, isn't in this book, but you never know in another 10 years. I like the way you said this book. Yes, absolutely. Um, Got to leave something, you know. Uh, so the fans have asked favorite sideshow pieces, uh, Star Wars or even non-Star Wars. Mm. What, what's your, your, your favorite piece that sideshow has put out? Oh, man, my absolute favorite piece? Um, I feel like you could have been ready for this one. That's a, that's a big question. Um, Han Solo and Carbonite. Han Solo just, and Carbonite, but just of the course, pinky. you know, just the pinky. That's always uh, at least top five. Um, give always, me a couple. You can give me the, a couple. I, I love the Hellboy guns that we've done. The Big Baby and the Samaritan were fantastic pieces. Those yeah. I absolutely love. I love the um, Venture Bros pieces that we did. Those are probably two of my favorite, the Maltov and the, the Brock Samson. I, li I like that. Those so, are good answers. Yeah. Samuel, how about you? Uh, mine are probably the 12-inch uh, G.I. Joe line mm. that Sideshow did mm. uh, several years ago. I've got almost all of those, and they're, yeah, amazing. They're there's, awesome. there's a Storm Shadow in there that's based off of the Storm Shadow 2, and I keep trying to break into the case so I can take it because it's just such a great piece. It's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. I like those answers. I like that we didn't uh, immediately dive back to Star Wars. I feel like... I feel like it's fun, a nice varied uh, grouping of answers. Uh, now, are there uh, pieces in the book that you really wish you had in your collection or that you wish that you had held on to? 
um, some of the mythos pieces I wish I had picked up along the way yeah. um, <laughs> for myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think. The, we talked about the Ewok one. I had that on my desk at Lucasfilm, and so I regret not, uh, yeah, not keeping that one when I left. I regret um, you not keeping the that Stormtrooper one. with the Ewoks because it was really, yeah, it was really mm-hmm. cute. And um, is that the word one. cute? Is cute <laughs> well, the word you want to give for that? The piece? Ewoks are cute. You know, they're a little violent, but. It's aggressive. It's a wonderfully aggressive piece. I love it's it's it might actually be one of my favorites because for the opposite that it doesn't make the Ewoks look like little lovey dovey teddy bears. They are going right. to town on that poor stormtrooper. Yeah. Uh, I do like that. Uh, that's great. Now uh, here's a great question: uh, If you could pick an item from the archive to re-release, mm. so an item that was sold out that would you know any of those mythos pieces because those mm. sell out so fast, yeah. uh, what would you pick sort of to be what you could give back to the sideshow community um, to give them another chance to to pick up? Uh, for, for Star Wars, I think the life-size Salacious Creme would be really cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's a, it's been a while. It's, it's been several years yeah. now, or maybe a decade or so. Yeah. yeah, and you know, fun to see that species kind of in a different light in the Mandalorian was kind of fun too. Kind of bring them back into your, oh, your yeah. forefront. So I think that would be a neat piece. Um, what else would be neat to bring back? I think that Mythos Obi Wan statue might not be the. Worst idea. That thing sold yeah, that out was in a, half a minute. Yeah, right? that was yeah. A, a great piece. And the stories and the art that went with that was really neat as well. So. I do love those mythos pieces. Mm-hmm. I love sort yeah. of the ability to sort of dive in deeper yeah. and, and sort of play with uh, the lore. Of yeah, the- and the Gamorrean Guard was a great one as well, just showing it another side of what you would see in the films where it's kind of this... Yeah, he was like an executioner, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's badass. He's jacked. Yeah. He's huge. So that was, that was a great one too. But. He lifts, bro. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I appreciate it. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. It was so much fun talking to you. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks that. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being here, Andrew and Samuel. Of course, it was wonderful to be able to speak with you about this book and Star Wars in general. Now, if you would like to own a copy of Star Wars Collecting a Galaxy, head to side.show slash collect a galaxy. Now, I will definitely be picking up another copy of this one because I want this little guy. I have the big one, but I need a portable version of it. Um, so uh, make sure you get your copy. The art is absolutely stunning, and you have to get a little piece. You get to look, get a little piece of those figures you might have missed, get a good view of them. I appreciate it. I love this. Thank you guys so much Thank for you. coming here. And uh, wow, this has been uh, quite a show. A uh, pretty amazing show today. Uh, thank you, of course, to our guest host, Josh E.G. Uh, don't forget to check out our Captain Marvel first look. Uh, she's going to be dropping a link to that in the chat right now for you live viewers. So shout out to Bree for doing that. You have been an amazing and awesome audience. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you for your questions. And thank you for spending your time with us. And of course, as always, don't forget to let your geek side show. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show.